this here is probably the worst distribution box uh, that we've ever encountered. Right here is the pipe coming in from the septic tank. And as you can see, all of this, these micro roots have made their way into the distribution box. So there is no more dispersal into the field whatsoever. It's completely blocked. Nothing is getting onto the field. The field itself probably looks a lot like this as well. These roots have been here for quite some time, causing damage to the distribution box. As you can see, the graying area right there, that's the edge of the D-box, and that is completely disintegrated into just sands now. There's no more concrete left. As you can see, it's totally blocked. We'll get it lifted on it. It'll be nice to get a picture of the bottom of it, right? Yeah, you're almost there. There we go. So that's the bottom of the distribution box. It a little bit once we scrape this massive root. And because the distribution box is totally disintegrated. This supplement is just making its way into the soil. It's not even distributing into the field whatsoever. So definitely the worst case scenario right here. There you go. That's all the water rushing from the, uh, from the pipe right now that's blocked. So here's the massive root structure that we just pulled out of the distribution box. And as you can see, going up the pipe here, it's totally blocked. Now this pipe is actually supposed to enter a concrete box. And as you can see, there's no more concrete. It's completely disintegrated. That's the outside edge of the distribution box. So right here is the dissolved concrete. So that just tells us that it's very important to leave, you see how deep it is? It's very important to leave your distribution box with enough air circulation. So the cover has to be up on the surface to allow air circulation in here. Otherwise the gases from the, from the septic tank and from the effluent traveling into the distribution box stay through here and it starts to disintegrate the concrete. So that, that's our, that's our issue here today. Basically, there's nothing holding this effluent back. There's nothing uh, seeping into the field. It's all root structure. It's all failed here. So this is probably one of the worst case scenarios of a distribution box that we've seen. So we're on location at another job site here where we've got a lot of uh, runoff from the septic. As you can see, we've got a lot of slimy areas here. So this drenched field area is completely saturated. So that means one end of the field is not functioning properly. So we're gonna go up towards the tank area. As you can see, this is a very challenging site. Multiple tiers on a big slope. So here you see the, the tank up above, the piping down below. If you follow it closely, We've ex excavated the distribution box. So if we can see this, everything's completely plugged right up again. So again, this is causing a short circuit. So it's running from the septic tank and it's going down basically just those two lateral sections. Those two there, as you can see, are totally caked. These two here, nothing is going down those laterals anymore and this waterway is making a short circuited path directly to those two and that's why we see that effluent down below in the field so we're going to correct this real quick clean it up and uh, we'll have water flow to the rest of the laterals get this field back in shape so as you can see we just ran a little bit of water you can see exactly where everything's going right now. All the water is just going right into those two lateral sections of the drain field. So I just basically wanted to test out the short circuit and sure enough, just to make sure 
those two are accepting the most amount of effluent and that's why we have issues down below as you just saw so you see how that uh, concrete is just breaking apart that's with all the gases in the distribution box over time everything just crumbles that's why it's very important to have a lid to the surface from the distribution box so that uh, air can circulate inside these things because it breaks down concrete like this and then eventually it'll totally disintegrate So what we're going to do now is test the water flow and adjust the speed levelers to see which sections are taken in the most. Adjust that far end a little higher. Well, being that these ones are so off, taking quite a bit. So now we're correcting the problem. It looks as though we've got it pretty even. We're all accepting the same amount of effluent, just about. Yeah, this one here seems to be taking quite a bit too. It's better. There we go. So it's not taking any. I think we got it. Yeah, I think so too. So after some excavation, this distribution box was uh, dug out. We separated it. You can see the flow. There's a lot, a lot of solid buildup in here. It's pretty nasty. So you can see the water that's flowing from the septic tank and short circuiting directly into one line. And the other lines are completely plugged. So short circuiting just basically means that this water is skipping ahead, creating a channel and going out one direction only. And so as you can see that particular channel of the trench is plugged. These other ones are totally plugged. There is absolutely zero effluent getting to those sections of the laterals. Only this one is getting hit. So as you can see, traveling downward, we were excavating trying to hit the, the pipe and we made some incremental holes until we located the piping network. And we followed the channels so we're hitting the channels and here you can see the infiltrator and the water backing right up and then creating a path down the uh, down the roadway here so causing a lot of environmental concern here so what we had to do is work backwards locate that one trench keep digging till we located the distal end of that uh, trench and then we kept making marker holes to locate our distance to the distribution box so we took measurements from the as-built as you can see it's a uh, buried quite deeply here unfortunately there's a lot of backfill that got pulled over the septic field and septic system which you should never do the distribution box should never be five feet below ground like this So this is a big problem and we've got uh, some infiltrator chambers leading right out of it as you can see those two channels are supposed to receive effluent but it's going right into the bank so this is exactly what not to do never put backfill over top of trenches like this 
because it creates uh, quite the bad scenario here, as you can see. So now that we completely unblocked all the uh, channels here, we uh, adjusted our speed levelers and we had the flow coming from the house, a good substantial flow so we can direct it as we want it. So this area here was receiving the most, it was getting short circuited. So now we have it directed so it's receiving the least amount of effluent to help in its recovery. And then uh, this one here, this one here, and this one here, which hasn't seen any flow in probably well over a year, is now gonna be uh, receiving the majority of the effluent. And then whatever it, uh, whatever is left is going to be received mostly in this one and this one is going to be receiving minimal because this one has had a substantial amount going through just this one channel for well over a year causing the failure that you saw earlier so the problem with these distribution boxes sometimes is that you ha we have to be very aware that any micro shift, whether it be a couple of millimeters here or there, and in the field, whether there's a little bit of a shift in the piping, a millimeter can really affect the amount of flow going into each channel. So we wanna make sure that the maintenance provider checks your distribution box while he's pumping out at the very minimum. So at the very minimum, this needs to be checked every couple of years just to be sure that these speed levelers are working properly and that each section of the trench is receiving the same amount of flow. So now as we make our way down from the distribution box, we're gonna just check out our trench overflow again. As we can see, there is no more water trickle. The water stopped trickling and is now settling and now this wastewater is going to be absorbed into the soil. Now our next order of business is we need to contain this. So we have to bring a little bit of sand over top of this to ensure that it doesn't continue to run down the bank. So now that we've stopped this flow, we certainly want to put some uh, topsoil over top of this just to ensure that this stays safe. 